A lot of self-hosted applications have the ability to specify an SMTP server to allow the application to send out emails. Now that's going to be really useful to get email notifications. It can be used to confirm the email addresses of new users being added to your applications. So it's really nice to have uh, an SMTP server to do this. Now, what I want to show you in this tutorial is how to set this up with AWS SES or simple email services, because it's nice not to try to uh, do this with your own Gmail account. It's kind of nice to have a dedicated service to send out emails from, and it's also really cheap. So AWS does charge you per email and it is a hundredth of a cent per email. So depending on what you're using it for, really not really a significant cost. My self-hosting services, I'm only really gonna use this to like confirm emails. I don't really have it, you know, spamming out uh, emails or anything like that. So uh, a cent 400 emails is uh, super cheap. And so we're just using this for email notifications. Uh, I wanna show you how to do this with AWS SES. So uh, like and subscribe to the video if you enjoy it and let's get into it. Okay, so you're going to want to create a AWS account if you haven't already. Um, you don't need to be too concerned about um, using the tools. You probably do need to provide a credit card to verify your identity and so that you can be billed for your services. So in this case, you will be billed for uh, SES, Simple Email Services. Now, you know, if you're only charged maybe a cent, um, I don't know if you will actually be charged at all. So just keep that in mind. This is going to be a very cheap to use. So I'm going to go ahead and go to um, Amazon Simple Email Services. You can also use the search tool or use the menu button up here to find the Amazon Simple Email service. So let's go ahead and go to that portal. Now, if this is your first time to the portal, you can probably just use the get started button here. You do need to verify uh, your domain and it, you're going to start off in sandbox mode, meaning that you can only send emails to verified email addresses. Once you verify that the system works to that verified email address, then you can um, basically apply or upgrade your account from the sandbox mode. So if I go to get set up, I can see that I already have production access granted. So I'm not going to have to verify my uh, email address. However, what you would do is go to configuration verified identities, and then you would put your own email address in here so that you can start sending emails to yourself, even in sandbox mode. So that would be right here, configuration identities. Okay, so I do have identities for the various domains. And let me just go ahead and delete this entry for wildebeestmedia.com. Or actually, so let's go ahead and set up a verified identity for Thomas Wild Tech. So let's go to create identity. This is going to be domain. So I do need to verify ownership of the domain. So we're going to do thomaswildtech.com. Okay, and this domain is registered with Cloudflare, not with uh, Route 53. So we are probably just going to go ahead and select the easy DKIM identity type. And we'll stick with that default there. And then, I mean, we're not going to be using Route 53 because I'm not using Route 53. So let's go ahead and disable that. Okay. And then we will create the identity. So now we can verify our domain name by publishing these records. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to sign into my Cloudflare account. I'm going to go to Thomas Wild Tech and select my DNS configuration. Now I do already have this domain set up with an email provider, uh, but this shouldn't actually conflict with that. So what we're going to do is create a CNAME record with name and value of all three of these. So we're going to add a record CNAME. That's the name. And this is the value. No proxy. Okay. And for the comment, I might say AWS DKIM one and save that. 
Okay, we're gonna do that for the remaining two. So AWS DKIM three. Okay, so now we've done that for each of the records. And you should also do the DMARC record as well. I already have a DMARC record, so I'm not going to publish that one. All right, now that we've published those two name records, we can see, try refreshing this. And then boom, identity status is verified. Okay, now that we've verified the domain, we do need to understand how to get the credentials in order to actually send using the API. So we should do this through the SMTP settings and then go to create my SMTP credentials, SMTP settings. So we have our endpoint, we have the start TLS port, typically use uh, 587. And then you can hit create SMTP credentials, or I can also manage existing credentials. So what I will do for this tutorial is to create SMTP credentials. So the username will be Thomas Wild Tech Demo SMTP, and we're just gonna hit create user. It already kind of has the permissions set up. Okay, so now we have our SMTP username and our SMTP password. So this is what we need. So let's go ahead and copy this. We don't really need the uh, IAM username, but we do need the SMTP username. So let's go SMTP username, SMTP password, copy. Now the other information that we generally will need will be the host name and the port. And that is pretty much it. So if we go back to the SEC console, SES console. We'll see that host name endpoint right there. So that is our endpoint. Okay. And then we're going to use the start TLS port or port 587. So basically what that means, if I, if I understand this correctly, is that it'll begin the transaction with plain text and then convert it to a encrypted TLS connection for submitting the email. If you want to use the TLS wrapper port, you can use 468. Uh, but I think in general, start TLS is um, kind of the most supported way of uh, doing it. So we'll just kind of stick with that. Okay, and I just did a Gramps Web uh, genealogy tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that as my test ground for sending out email notifications. So to, to set these environmental variables um, after I've already created the, um, the application, I'm going to actually just use environmental variables. So the Gramps web email host, email port, host username, host password, and the default from. Now also I'm telling it that we're not using TLS because we're using the start TLS port, which is port 587. So let's create these variables. So what I'm going to do is inside of my Gramps here, and this is, you know, the same with Bitwarden, the same with uh, Nextcloud, OpenCloud, you're basically setting up the same type of information. So I'm going to go ahead and create a .env file, and we're going to do a SMTP host, and that is the endpoint right there. So that's the AWS uh, email server. So SMTP port is 587. The SMTP username, that is that specific username identity that we got. And then the SMTP password is this guy. Okay, so let's save that. We have all this information in here for our Gramps web. Let's go ahead and do a Docker Compose down. And then let's take it back up, Docker Compose up D. Okay, and now we should be using those environmental variables. And let me see if I can refresh the page here. Okay, and I can. So let me try hitting my site in incognito. So I have to sign out, or I guess I could just log out here too. And I wanna register a new account. So this is going to send me an email to verify. So username, I'll just say Ted. Password is Ted, password is Ted. Okay, and I will just use my personal email address here. 
full name, I'll say Ted, and then we're gonna do a register new account. So then it says, please confirm your email address by clicking the link in the email you received and then wait for the tree owner to activate your account. Okay, and then sure enough, in my Gmail here, I do have the email sent from no reply at thomaswildtech.com saying, hi, Ted. So we, are, we have confirmed that the SMTP settings are working. It's as simple as that. So not too complicated to set up your own email system using SES. Again, when you first create your AWS account, that SES is gonna be in sandbox mode. So you will need to um, set up a verified email address for you to test it out with. After you've done that, you can basically um, upgrade the account so that it goes to production mode. They do just want to verify that you're not like some crazy spammer that you're going to be abusing the system. So you just provide what your reasoning is for the email um, SMTP server. You can just say, hey, I need to be able to send email notifications for my self-hosted services. And then they will grant you um, that production account. It may take one or two or maybe even up to a week uh, business days. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, for production mode. Once you have it set up, now you have email notifications for all of your self-hosted applications. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. All right.